Hey guys, Sarah here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing my step-by-step at-home mani. You guys comment all the time about my nails. I'm a little OCD about them, and so I decided to share my full process of what I do to get my at-home manicure. So I am going to share that with you guys today. If you're interested in that, keep watching, and if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe before you leave so you don't miss any of my future videos. All right, let's get into it. Just so you know, before we get started, I will link everything down below in the bottom bar that I mentioned today, all of the products in the order that I mentioned them, and I will link my nail polish. This is the color... Uh, matter of fiction. I will link it down below in case you guys are interested in it. I did paint my nails a couple days ago. I filmed the rest of this video, I think three days ago, so they're not as perfect. I mean, they still look pretty good, but anyway, just figured I should sh share that since I just did a close up of them. Um, but yeah, let's get into my process. Starting out, I am going to take my nail polish off. I figured I would start with my nails done so that I can show you every single step that I do start to finish. So first of all, I'm going to take acetone. This is 100% acetone. This is just the up and up brand from Target. I really like this one. I have had a lot that are just in regular bottles and you just unscrew the top. This one I like because you can pop the top and then I take the jumbo cotton balls and you just press down and the product comes out of this. So this container I have just found to be super, super easy to work with. And then I just take my nail polish off. I found that acetone takes nail polish off the easiest, so that's what I use. I personally don't have an issue with it. I know a lot of people are against using acetone, but I just make sure to moisturize my hands after my nails are done, and I don't really feel like I have any bad side effects from it. Once my nails are completely clean, there are a couple steps that I do. So first of all, I want to push my cuticles back and trim them. So any of the nails that the cuticles are really long, I just want to make sure that I push those back. To do that, I use this metal tool. I'm not really sure what it's called, but I will link everything down below for you guys. And then I use these cuticle trimmers. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that your nails are damp so either soak them in warm water like they do if you're at a salon or you can do it right when you get out of the shower your nails your cuticles are nice and soft that's the easiest time to trim your cuticles so what i'll do is i'll just take this tool and i will gently push back my cuticles And you'll notice on here, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but there's the cuticle right here. And then right above that, there's a bunch of like, I don't even know what it is. It's like cuticle skin stuff that I don't want on my nail, but we will buff that off. So don't worry about that. Just worry about the actual cuticle. So again, I'm just going to push back my cuticles on all of my nails. And this should not be painful. So if it's painful, you are either pushing them back too far or they are not soft enough to be pushed back. But yeah, this should not hurt at all. Okay, now that all of my cuticles are pushed back, I'm gonna take this tool again and kind of bring them back forward just so that they're kind of standing up. You might not be able to see the detail of this on camera, but I just find that it's much easier to trim them if I kind of pull them back forward. So once they're all kind of pulled back forward, I will take my trim and just cut off those pieces. Now that all of my cuticles are trimmed, I'm going to file my nails. And to do that, I use this nail file. I got it from Sally's. It is the medium 100 slash 180 grit. So this I really like. I don't like when it's a bigger grit just because that one I find is harder to use. So what I do is I just go back and forth. I personally like a more square nail shape, but I like them to be rounded on the edges because I don't want them to be sharp. So I always 
kind of smooth up the edge of my nail and then I file them back and forth. So I find that if I kind of file them with the nail file down instead of straight on, it's easier to get a nice soft edge so that they're not pointy on these edges. And then to get the actual nail down a little bit, I don't normally cut my nails, I'll just file them. So I'll take a little bit of length off just by going back and forth. And generally when I start, the nails aren't exactly even anymore because they don't grow perfectly even. So I will kind of file a little bit of length off and then also square them off while I'm at it. Just remember to be gentle because you can always take more off but you cannot add more. So if you're really rough, you will take a lot of length off very quickly. So just be gentle with your nails. And then once you're happy with the shape and length, you move on and do the rest of your nails. All right, now that my nails are filed to the shape and length that I want, it is time to buff them out. So this is the buffing block that I use. Again, I will link everything down below in the bottom bar, but this has three different grit sizes on it. And this, as if you can't tell, is the size that, side that I always use. So what I like to do is buff out the edges of my nails because that will take any sharp edges off of it and then I also buff on top because it helps your paint stay on longer and like I said that like extra skin cuticle area you can buff that too and it'll just smooth it out and get rid of it so I will show you this is the before of my thumb and then that is the after so you can see all of that skin is gone so I'm just gonna do the same thing on all of my nails I will note you want to be really careful with this because you could just file off like the layer of your nail which you don't want to do that you just want to get it prepped for paint but you don't want to just completely get rid of your nail obviously okay my nails are buffed so now i want to go wash them so all of this debris on my nails is gone so i will be right back okay my hands are washed it is time for my base coat so I use this from LA Girls, the Calcium Nail Builder. I've been using it for years. This is what I always use as my base coat. So one of the biggest tips I have is paint your dominant hand first. I'm left-handed, so I'm going to paint my left hand first. So I'm going to use my non-dominant hand to paint because I want this hand to not have nail polish on it because I don't have as much control over my right hand. So it's much easier for me to mess up my right hand than it is my left hand because I am left-handed. So I rest my hand on my surface, so I only have to control my fingers. I don't have to control my hand as well. It's much harder to control your whole hand than it is to rest your hand and only control your fingers. So I normally start at the base in the center, do one stroke down, and then one on each side. I do brush, dip my brush in almost every time and I scrape it against one side and the side that still has the product on it is the side that I use. So again, I kind of dab in the middle and the center, go down and then repeat across my entire nail. So I'm going to do that for my entire hand. So now that my left hand is painted, I can paint using my left hand, which this is my dominant hand. So I'm not as uncomfortable having wet nails as I would be if this was my right hand. So again, I'm still leaning and using the exact same techniques to get the easiest application, but I'm much more comfortable painting my right hand because I can use my dominant hand to paint. I hope that that makes sense. Okay, I'm going to let that dry and I will be right back. A lot of times when I'm painting my nails, I will be doing computer work because I can type on my keyboard without messing up my nails. So I always try to find something that I can be productive at while still painting my nails. So it's not just a huge time suck. So I'm gonna wait for these to dry, I will be back. My base coat is dry. If you want to know if it's actually dry rather than just touching it, although that works too, I like to press them against each other. And if they feel sticky still, they are not set. 
So mine are a little bit sticky still, but that's okay because we're doing the um, base coat. So we are going to move on to our first coat of polish. I'm going to use my Essie Gel Couture. This is the shade Matter of Fiction. It is hands down my favorite go-to color. It's that pink, almost white shade. And again, I'm gonna start by painting my left hand since it is my dominant hand. And this one's brush, I'm just gonna take most of the polish off and show you the brush really quickly. So the brush is a paddle brush, it is rounded, so it fits really easily on your nail shape, which I really appreciate. So I'm going to dip in and then scrape that one side against the bottle so you don't really see any product on that side, but this side is full of product. So I'm going to start with my pinky nail. Super easy, I still have quite a bit of product, so I'm just gonna keep going. Again, press in the middle and drag, and then on each side. For me, for my thumbs, one of the easiest things to do is to put my thumb against the edge of my table. So say my hand is the table, I'll put my thumb here so that it's easier to paint on. Painting it in the middle of a table is really hard because you can't get the leverage. So that's just one tip. I can't do that right now while I show you guys, but if you're doing it at home, you can put it on the edge of the table. So now we're gonna go through and do the same thing on my right hand. Another thing I like to do is I like to paint the farthest nail away first so that I can move forward without accidentally getting my hands in these nails while they're wet and trying to paint the other direction. So that means that I usually start by painting my pinky nails. Another thing I will say is that when you're painting, sometimes you will put your brush here where your nail doesn't stop and then kind of press the polish closer to the cuticle. Instead of pushing it down, like putting your brush down on the cuticle, just because that usually ends up with paint all over your cuticles. Okay, so that is the first coat done. It looks streaky, it's not opaque, it's not perfect. We're gonna let this one dry and then I will be right back. My first coat is dry to the touch. So we're gonna move on to the second coat. I'm gonna do the exact same thing with this coat. Just making sure to cover the whole nail, starting with my right hand and my pinky per usual. And if you get too much on your brush for one nail, you can move it to the next nail, but just make sure that you get to that nail quickly. You can't just leave it there or else it will mess up the paint. Okay, my second coat is done. You can definitely stop at two coats. I personally still do three coats just because I feel like it gives me that perfect, opaque, amazing look. So my nails are very opaque. They're pretty even. I just messed up my pinky nail, so I'm gonna have to fix that. Um, but you can definitely stop at two coats. You do not need three. I am going to do three though because I'm a perfectionist and I really like when my nails have that like salon look. So I'm gonna let this coat dry, and then I will do my third coat. Okay, my second coat is dry. We're gonna go in with a third and final coat. So doing the exact same thing once again. I'm not sure why I didn't think of doing this for my first three coats for my thumbs, but here we are. Okay, my third coat is on. I'm going to wait about a minute. I'm not gonna wait for them to be completely dry, but I'm gonna wait about a minute and then we'll do our top coat. It's been about a minute, so I'm going to now put on my top coat. I use the INM out the door. This is the gigantic bottle. It does come in just like a regular sized bottle too, but I have the big bottle just because I do paint my nails quite a bit. So I'm going to open this and one thing I like to do, the reason I don't let my nails completely dry is because this top coat kind of melts all of the polish together, which gives you that really nice, like perfected look. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera, but the difference between like my pinky nail and my ring finger right now, the pinky nail just 
looks like it's perfectly finished. So if you let your nails dry all the way and they're set, then they won't, the polish can't really move at all. But if you paint them, do the top coat with only like a minute in to your last coat. Okay, I'm saying this wrong. If you do your top coat after waiting only about a minute after doing your last paint coat, then you kind of get that nice melted perfected look. Okay, now I'm gonna wait another minute and then I'm going to put on these drying drops that are seriously lifesavers. They make your nails dry so fast. So I will be back in one minute. All right, it's been a minute. I'm gonna go in with my OPI drip dry drying drops. This again is a gigantic bottle. It does come in a much smaller bottle, but you just take this little dropper, it has the liquid inside of it, and just drop kind of one or two drops. I usually do it at the nail base with my nails slightly down so that the oil gets all over the entire nail. And this just helps set your nails really quickly. Now I just wait a minute and then my nails will be dry to the touch. They won't be completely set, but they'll be set enough to live life. All right, so it's been a minute. My nails are nice and dry. I haven't washed them. I usually like to wash them after I do anything before, or before I do anything, after I put those drying drops on, just because they are a little bit oily. So I do have a bit of oil on my fingertips and I don't want that all over my stuff. But these are my finished nails. In about 20 minutes, I'm going to go over to my sink and take just run hot water on my hands and I will just kind of peel off the areas where I have paint on the sides of my fingers to kind of perfect my nails. I feel like that's the easiest way to get it off and it really gets everything off because the paint doesn't want to stick to your skin. So I will do that and when my nails are completely finished, I will come back and show you the finished result. Okay, I just cleaned up my nails. They're a little wet, but this is the finished result. I'm happy with them. I feel like this is such an easy at-home manicure. It does take time to get good at it, but once you are good at it, you feel like you're better than the people that do it at the salon. So I hope that this is helpful for you. Alrighty guys, that is everything for this video. I hope that it was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please leave them down below for me. If you have video requests, any of that good stuff, leave it down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed and don't forget to subscribe before you leave so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.